Hello and welcome. In this section, you will learn about modern JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language that is based on ECMAScript specifications, which is a standard set by European Computer Manufacturers Association, also known as ECMA. So whenever a new feature is added or updated in ECMAScript, that is reflected in JavaScript. The most recent update is known as ES6, which came to effect in 2016. From now on, ECMAScript will be adding or updating new features to the language on a yearly basis. So you will see ES7 in 2017 or ES8 on 2018 and so on. But there will be minor changes. The major changes were made into ES6. So what it changed in ES6? Quite a lot. It has made JavaScript a much better language to work with. We will begin by learning the new features added by ES6 as well as comparing them to the old ways of doing things so that we know the difference and get in-depth understanding of JavaScript. Understanding ES6 is one of the most important thing to learn and understand React. In React, you will be writing plain JavaScript along with new features added by ES6. So learning React is like learning JavaScript, let's say modern JavaScript. Getting better at React means getting better at JavaScript. So let's begin by learning modern JavaScript from the very next lesson. Hello and welcome. In this video, let's begin learning modern JavaScript. Now here I have a folder here, full stack, and it has two files. They are completely empty. In this folder I have on my desktop. So you can go ahead and create a folder and create these two files. And what I've done is I've opened this index.html in my Google Chrome and I have the dev tools open as well. So let's begin. The first thing, let's go to index.html and create a simple HTML document. And here in the body section, we can create a script tag. And then the source will be index.js. It will be in the same directory. So index.js. And let's start writing some JavaScript here. So let's begin by creating a variable the old school way. Okay. So in JavaScript, you would create a variable using va keyword. Va and give it a name. So let's say name variable and give it a value. Let's say y. Okay. Now we can simply alert this variable. Now this alert method. Let's give it name variable as its argument and let's go check out in the browser. Refresh, as you can see, we get the variable value. All right. So that's how you can create a variable in JavaScript. But how about the value that it holds? Its value can be changed over time. For example, name, let's give it a different value. Let's give gen, save, and go to the browser and refresh. You see, it changed. Okay, so that's how you create variable in JavaScript. Now, in JavaScript, variables can hold many different kinds of data. They can hold strings, they can hold integer types, they can hold even the functions as their values, they can hold objects, arrays, all sorts of values they can hold. With ES6, there are two more ways of creating variables, const and let. Okay, so in this video, let's learn about const. So why did we need another method to create a variable when we have this one? Let me show you. If I want to create a variable whose value will not change over time, in that case, how would you create a variable? Before we had only this option, but now we have another option called const so const lets you create a variable 
that's value cannot be changed okay so let's begin in fact we can modify this one const name equals Ryan now we changed the const here this shouldn't work so let's see what sort of error we get in the browser refresh as you can see on code type error assignment to constant variable so we cannot assign a different value to constant okay so that's the whole point in a situation like that where you know a certain variable whose value will not change over time so in such situation you can use const to create variable okay so if i get rid of this one it should work okay we can alert the name refresh it works okay so this is one way of creating variables using const in es6 in es6 we have one more way of creating a variable that is using let okay so why would we use let let me show you for example let's say we have if statement so it will check if the condition is true it will do something okay so let's move this here let's get rid of this as well so if the condition is true we create a variable okay let's use the var keyword just to show you an example here so if true create this variable and alert this variable okay let's save go to the browser and refresh we know it works right but if we come out of this scope and try to alert here try to alert this name this shouldn't work right but in javascript it works because when you create a variable using var keyword it becomes part of the window object if i comment this out and if we try to alert this variable access this variable which is inside the if statement it still works as you can see still works now let me show you what i mean by window object so if you type window in your terminal in the console you can see it has the window object has a lot of properties okay now the one we created this var it should be available here as well we can say window dot name and you see we get the value of ryan because this has become a property of this window object so we access the property using the dot notation here okay so what if we don't want that because in many cases you don't want this to happen in a larger application this can be really problematic there can be a conflict between variable names right so you can use the late keyword okay it stays within its surrounding scope using the let keyword okay so if we use let and we try to access the variable created with let outside of the scope let's see what we get refresh let me copy this open in a different tab okay as you can see it doesn't have anything okay so if i inspect now if i try window.name it's empty that's because it is not being part of the window object it is not hoisted on top it is still remained in this scope okay so that's the benefit of using let now if we try to alert from within obviously it works refresh it works we can change just like we can change the value of this variable over time using var keyword now we can do the same with let as well so for example let let's change this to gen let's try refresh and it works okay so it is recommended to use let instead of var it has the same characteristics the benefit is it doesn't get hoisted on top and become part of the window object so that you can avoid the unexpected results in your application okay in this lecture you will learn about template strings okay so template strings are a better alternative to string concatenation so 
I want to show you by example here. So let me create a couple of variables. Let first name. Let's give Ryan. Let's create another variable last name like L name goes to D and then let's create another variable called is equals to this time what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the users to input the A's okay so let's use this prompt and then we give a simple message yeah yes Ryan's A's okay so we got, we got these three variables first name last name and the is will come from the user input okay now how would we construct the sentence the old way let's construct this statement in a variable and let's name it result okay we could say something like first name and then we use the plus sign to concatenate right and then space and then again plus and then we could say last name again plus again space again plus is again plus space yes old it's pretty awful right this is the old school way but luckily we have new way but this is how we would normally do right let's give it a try let's alert this result variable okay let's go to the browser and refresh okay that's because i have this in, if i want to use the single quote there i can simply wrap this with double quotes okay let's save this refresh okay it is asking for the as guess let's let's guess 30 okay okay so we get the alert ryan d 30 years old okay so this is how we can concatenate the strings right now let's try using the template string So let's again create the same variable now this time use template string now the first thing you want you need to do is use the back ticks okay so these back ticks are on your keyboard on the top left corner right below the escape key so within back ticks we can write whatever we like we can have space we can write whatever anything so let's construct this sentence to embed variables inside template string what you do is you use the dollar sign and the curly braces okay dollar sign curly braces and here inside you can put variables okay so we want to put the first name right and then we want space right now we don't need to worry about plus and space and all that we can simply have a space simple as that first name and then we can also have another variable last name again space is and then again another variable is which will come from the prompt is years old just like writing plain english how good is that and this becomes super useful when you're making api calls you need to construct the url in a situation like that it is absolute pleasure instead of this okay so this is how you create template string now let's give it a try results okay let's give it a try refresh guess Ryan D is 30 years old. So this is how easy it is and very exciting. It is one of my favorite feature added in ES6. All right. So this is your introduction to template strings. 
Okay, this lesson is about default parameters. So with ES6, you have this ability to pass default parameters, for example, to your function arguments. Okay, so let's begin by creating a simple function and we will go from there. Okay, so function, let's call it welcome. And then it will simply alert okay so I'm going to use the template string so use two backticks now within these backticks I expect for example this function expects the user and message okay so let's give these arguments user message and here I'm going to construct a sentence so that I can alert okay so I will say hello I'll call the user by the user name so hello user comma and then the message okay so this is the function this function expects two arguments user and message let's invoke this function The first argument is user let's give name Ryan to the user and then message is let's say good morning okay so we have a function we have invoked the function we have passed the arguments everything is perfect it should work let's go to the browser let's refresh hello Ryan good morning so that's pretty good message so while using this function if the arguments are passed then this function works perfectly right but for example let's imagine that this input would come from the user and for some reason the user didn't provide the arguments okay didn't provide the name didn't provide the message so in such case what would happen this function would break right if you refresh hello undefined undefined okay so in a situation like this we could benefit by using the default arguments what we could do is we could simply assign a default value to this one for example the user let's give a default value of mystery person okay and message let's give a default value of good day okay so in this case even though there are no arguments passed this function will not break and it will still function with the default value okay so let's go to the browser and try hello mystery person great so this is much better than undefined undefined right so obviously we can be more creative but that's not the point the point is to understand about default parameters right so this is how you can use default parameters when you're creating a function and this is pretty awesome i hope you like it with es6 we can write arrow functions these arrow functions are a bit different than regular functions okay so let's begin by writing a simple regular function and then we will try to convert it to arrow function and we will learn more about arrow functions okay so let's begin by writing a simple function i'm going to call it greeting and it will expect two arguments in fact just one message okay and then it will simply return the alert with that message so i'm using a template string message and we can write everyone okay so if the argument comes as good afternoon it will simply alert good afternoon everyone right simple now let's invoke this function let's give the argument of let's say good morning let's give it a try in the browser good morning everyone so it works as expected now this function can be written in one line using arrow function okay so let's do that first let me assign it to a variable greeting and then arrow functions are like anonymous function function without a name right so you begin 
with the parentheses for the argument. So you don't need the function keyword to create arrow functions. Okay. You begin with parentheses and then you return whatever you like to return. Now the argument that we are taking is message, right? So this will be here. This is what we are returning, right? So this will be here. And that is all we need. So this function can be written using arrow function in one line like so. Now, if it is just one argument, you don't even need the parentheses. What if you have more than one argument? So in that case, you would need the parentheses and then you would add more arguments. But if it is just one argument, you don't need the parentheses. Now, you also must have noticed that we're not using the return keyword here. That's because with arrow functions, if it is just one statement that you are returning, then you don't need the return keyword. So this is just one statement we are returning, right? So we don't need the return keyword. Okay, so let me comment this out. Now in this example, I'm, I'm going to have multiple if statements, okay? So let's create this arrow function. Let's assign it to a variable, create blog. It will take the argument and it will return multiple statements, okay? So the argument it will take will be title and body. And here it will have two statements, okay? So the first statement will be the if statement it will check if there is no title okay so if there is no title we want to throw an error throw new error object and we can simply say a title is required okay so in a similar way we can also check for body so if the body is not there then we can also throw new error body can't be empty if we get title if we get body as well then we can return the blog okay so return and i'm going to use the template string okay so return title does body okay now let's invoke this function create blog let's try it like so without title and body let's see what we get refresh as you can see a title is required so obviously that works but let's say if we give the title and let's give the blog body as well let's alert Okay. as you can see we have the blog return okay so the point here is if you have more than one statement you can use curly braces you can use return keyword but if it is just one statement you don't need to do all this okay so this is how you write arrow function in ES6. Now, if there are no arguments, obviously you can get rid of this and you can simply have the parentheses. Okay, so if you're not expecting any arguments, you can just write it like so. Okay, and we can invoke this function and it works. Okay, so this is how arrow function simplifies things. Now, there is one more thing you need to know about arrow functions that is this keyword okay so we're going to cover that in the next video all right I'll see you in the next video thank you hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video we're going to learn about arrow function and how they relate to this keyword before we understand the relationship between this keyword and the arrow function we need to understand how it behaves with regular function okay so here I have a simple function with the name of say hi now in JavaScript when you create a function they become part of the global window object and that's important to know because when you use this keyword 
it refers to the enclosing context so in this case you would imagine that when you use this keyword here inside you would imagine that this refers to the function within the function within these two curly braces right and that is true but because in javascript when you create a function they become part of the global window object when you use this points to the window object to prove this to you what we can do is we can simply console log this okay so this is a special keyword so when we console log this we are referring to the enclosing context which is the window object so let's go and have a look at this so let me open up the developer tool as you can see we are console logging this which refers to the window object and if you click here you will see window object has a lot of properties so we should be able to see this say hi method available as the property of the window object let's have a look so that begins with s so let's go it's in alphabetical order if you go all the way down to s as you can see we have say hi function available as method in this window object so this refers to the enclosing context but because the function in javascript become part of the window object this refers to the window object okay so once you understand that we can see how it works with arrow function so let me get rid of all this with this knowledge let's go ahead and create a simple object that will have its own properties and methods and on that method first we will use the regular function and we will see the problem and we will solve that problem using arrow function create an object let's call it nepal so this will have let's add some property add property mountains and it will be an array an array of mountains such as everest Pistel Annapurna. Now let's create a method that will print all these mountains with a dash in between. Okay, so let's add the method. I'm going to call it print with a dash. In JavaScript, you know that functions can be used as the value right so this property will have a value of function okay function now i'm using the old school function and here i'm going to use set timeout method that you can use in javascript so set timeout now it will take two arguments the first argument is the function itself and the second argument is the timing so first let's create a function now what this function will do is it will simply console log this mountains and what I would like to do is I would like to use this join method this will simply join all the mountains name with a dash okay so this is the first argument of function itself and the second argument comma separated we can give the timing so after three seconds, this function will invoke itself, the set timeout function. We can try it. Let's alert Nepal, the object and its property. Let's let's get mountains. Fix this typo. It should be just Everest. And we should have it comma at the end, not the semicolon, right? Because it's just a the first property and then followed by the second property once we save we can go to the browser and give it a try and we can see the mountains name right that's fine that's the array but what about print with dash this method can we access this method let's try print with dash now let's give it a try let's get rid of the alert here 
okay so we are accessing the objects method okay so it should print out the console log the mountain's name in three seconds right so let's give it a try so the problem here is it cannot read property join of undefined which means it doesn't find the mountains we are referring with this but this is pointing to somewhere else not within this context so we need to understand clearly that this keyword is referring to which context this context or the outer functions context or the objects context or the window object we need to find that out right we can begin by just comment this out and then let's console log here console log this just to find out when we use this keyword within this function set timeout function we want to know where does this point to right we can also write here just for our reference inside set timeout let's go and refresh okay so inside set timeout window so it is still pointing to the window object when we use this now what about we console log here and let's write this one inside print with dash so let's find out inside this print with dash method this anonymous function when we use this let's find out where this refers to let's save and refresh okay so inside set timeout that is pointing to the window but interestingly inside print with dash it is pointing to the object itself as you can see the object has the mountains property and print with the dash function itself so this can be a bit tricky to understand but as you can see javascript behaves in a bit weird way when we use this here it points to the window object however this print with the dash function is a part of this object we used as anonymous function for that reason it is pointing to this object not on the window so this is where you can benefit by using arrow function because arrow functions don't have their own enclosing context so if you use it within another function in this case this anonymous function which is part of this object this keyword used inside the arrow function will point to the enclosing or outer function context okay so let's do that let's comment this out let's comment this out as well and what we can do is we can use let's bring it back let's get rid of this let's get rid of this this problem can be fixed by changing this function the first argument of this set timeout method let's change this to arrow function and it is pretty straightforward we can get rid of the function keyword we can get rid of these curly braces because it's just one statement we're returning and now all we have to do is use this arrow right now we can even put it in one line so more makes more readable okay and let's get rid of this same column so this is all we need to do because this arrow function don't have their own context this will refer to this function this outer function the wrapping function and this function as we know is part of this object right so when you access this object and invoke this method it will behave properly let's save this one and give it a try to refresh in three seconds we see the outcome awesome so this is important to understand because in react you will be using this pattern this way of writing code okay so this is it this is your introduction to the arrow functions and this keyword hello and welcome now in this video you're going to learn about es6 destructuring so we can break down the object or array structure into variables okay so let's start with this example let's create an object and let's name it things to do 
So this object, let's say it will have a couple of key value pairs, such as let's say morning. And morning will do exercise, right? And in the afternoon, we'll work. And in the evening, let's say we code. And at night, we do more than one thing. So let's give it a value of array. And we do sleep. And then, <laughs> once we sleep, we dream as well, right? OK, so it's a simple object. And we have a couple of key value pairs. And it holds the value of string. And this time, it's the value of array, OK? so this object let's say we want to use it but we don't want to use the evening you we don't want to use the night we just want to use the morning and afternoon so there's a better way of using uh, extracting the variables out of the object using um d structure okay so let's let's say i want to get the morning and afternoon out of this object and don't worry about anything else so what I can do is I can just create a variable with let and use this object literal syntax and assign it to things to do, right? So now I, I can start destructuring. So for example, I can destructure the morning out of that object structure. So this is the object structure and I'm destructuring. Okay, so I just want to take out the morning and afternoon okay now once you do this you are ready to use these keys as uh, individual variables okay so for example let's say console log let's console log morning and afternoon okay with dash in between okay now let's give it a try so we we have these values available as variables to use because we did object destructuring okay so let's give it a try refresh let's go inspect console and as you can see we have got the variables extracted destructured from the object exercise and work so those are the values these variables hold. Now you can also change the value as well, just like you would do with a regular variable. Okay. So for example, morning. Let's say you want to do something else. So don't want to exercise. Let's say you want to run. You simply assign the value again, different value. Save and give it a refresh, and you see it changed. Okay, so it's pretty flexible and it becomes super useful. And in fact, this way of writing code is all over when you're working with React. Okay, this is a very simple example of object destructuring in ES6. Before I end this video, I want to show you one more example of using object destructuring and this time with function arguments. Okay, so let's begin by creating a function. Let's, let's name it uni student. Okay, and it will take the student as argument. Okay, this is an arrow function and it will return. Let's console log. And let's build this up. Let's use this template string within these two backticks. We can use the variables, right? So using the dollar sign and curly braces, let's say student dot name because we are expecting an object so this object will have name property and the university okay so console log student name from let's say this is the old way by the way and then i will show you how you can um, improve it with destructuring okay so let's work with this first student dot university okay 
so we are taking this student object let's uh, pass this object via function argument okay so let's use this uni student this function it will take the argument student object right so this object will have name property with the value of the student name and university property with the value of let's say city okay so we have this function and it will take the object as an argument now we're not using any destructuring here this is the the old way of doing things right using the dot notation getting the the property out of the object okay so let's see let's give it a try refresh ryan from university of sydney well expected right but how can we um, improve this code using destructuring so what we can do we can destructure within this function okay so let's say let the D, let's use this destructuring and we want to destructure the variables from student right okay and within here what we want to use we want to use the name and university right so we can say so like name now instead of writing like so we all we need to do is we can use the name and we can use the university we don't need to use the dot notation because we are already destructured right so this way it works so this is the benefit of using destructuring if you're working with a larger object this really simplifies your code okay so let's give it a try refresh and it still works so that's cool but you can go one step further what you can do is you can destructure while taking as an argument so what you can do is instead of even doing sure you can directly destructure while taking an argument so you would normally use the parenthesis if it is more than one argument right so within here you can apply destructuring while taking it as an argument like so okay so this also works which is pretty cool so let's go give it a try refresh as you can see perfect okay so you can use destructuring in various ways to simplify your code and this is one of the exciting features added in es6 okay let's learn about destructuring and array so just like we did with objects in the previous lesson we can do with arrays as well so let's say we have an array so let's say we have an array of mountains okay Everest Fistel Annapurna okay so this is an array of mountains and let's say I want to get the first one okay so using array destructuring what you can do is you can simply assign it to a new name new array so let's say first mountain okay with this if it comes a log first mountain you will get the average because that is the first right so let's give it a try refresh we get average okay now let's say you want to get the second item of the array so what you would do like in the old way you would use like zero to get the first item one to get the second and two to get the third right so in a see this works in a similar fashion so this is the we just named it whatever we like we can name i named it first mountain so let's say i want to get the second uh, item so what i can do is i can simply comma separate okay so comma separate and don't pass any anything there so in this case it will skip the first one and give you the second one okay now we can change the name or leave it like so doesn't matter let's give it a try as you can see we get the second mountain awesome right now let's say you want to get the third one you can comma separate one more time now first item comma second item comma so both of them are skipped and you get the third one okay so if you give the refresh you see on the so this is how already structuring works 
just like destructuring we can also restructure okay so restructuring is the process of putting back together for example with object literal enhancement we can grab variables from the global scope and turn them into an object okay so let's have a look let's see how we can do this let's say we have variable name let's say Everest okay and let's say we have another variable height 8848 okay so these two variables are available in the global scope so let's use these variables to create an object okay so let's say for adventure climbing okay so this is an object and we create this object using these variables name and height so this is restructured and please ignore my uh, linter error i need to fix this one okay so so this is fine now let's try console logging this variable adventure climbing okay let's give it a try and we see an object we have created a new object we restructured beautiful so name and height are now keys of this adventure climbing object we can also create object methods with restructure so let's create this method let's name it let's create a variable first let's call it output and this will hold the value of function okay it's function now this function what it will do it will console log let's use this uh, template literal so within these two backticks let's say mount and we get the mountain's name so dollar sign within curly braces let's say this name okay is this height meter tall okay now what we can do is we can access this method so adventure climbing dot output okay in, we don't need to put inside console log so we can just invoke this function so when we invoke this function it will console log so let's give it a try refresh okay so we forgot to add this one save refresh and Mount Everest is at 1848 meter tall. Okay, so this is how you can restructure the object, add properties and methods. Now, why don't we try putting them all inside this object? Okay, because I want to show you one more thing you can do with ES6. Okay, so let's copy all this. Let's put it here. And we need to make some changes. So, so let's say name. Let's get rid of this equal sign and let's assign the value of Everest and get rid of the colon and use comma instead. So these are the, the properties of this object now. Okay. So let's get rid of this. Use colon and then use comma. So the first property is the name, second is the height, and the third is this function. So what you could do is you could use this property named output, it would hold the value of function right then get rid of this column okay so this is how you could create an object right this is the old way add the name properties and methods okay this, this is a function now we should still be able to access this that works fine however with es6 you don't need to use this function keyword okay so what you can do is you can get rid of this and use it directly like so okay so this is another thing you can do with es6 now we can still access this like so we refresh it's fine hi how are you doing now in this video you're going to learn about 
spread operator it is also used as rest operator and also as spread operator so in both cases what you would do is you would use three dots okay so you can use this to combine two arrays into one or combine two objects into one okay and when you combine it does not modify or mutate the original source so the original array or object stays as it is it doesn't get modified rather we create a new new instance new object or new array okay so let's have a look um, let's create a simple example and we use these uh, spread operator on arrays and object as well okay so let's begin with arrays let's create a variable let's call it mountains mountains okay and then let's create this array and let's add a couple of mountains okay Everest Fistel and Annapurna okay so we got three mountains in this array now let's say we got more mountains we got another variable that contains some other or another array with more mountains okay so let's say variable mountains from Japan let's say let's say Fuji now it can have more but let's just keep Fuji because I don't know any other name of the mountains from Japan okay so we got the mountains variable which contains three mountains and this variable contains one more so total we got four mountains okay so what I would like to do is I would like to create a new variable that contains both of these okay so using spread operator what we can do is let's say very var all mountains equals to this array it will hold it will take it will spread out all the contents of the mountains okay mountains and also we spread out the mountains from Japan okay so now this variable contains this array mountains and this array using these three dots comma separated okay now if you console log all mountains what we see is we see all these mountains from the first variable and the Fuji as well the second variable so this can so this will become very useful when you're working in an actual application for example let's say you have a state that contains a certain data and then you might get additional data from the API you make API request and you get more data okay so you might want to combine both data and render into your application right in a situation like that it can become very useful now let's try using it on object as well we did this on array now let's try on objects let's create a variable called day this is an object and this will have let's say breakfast this will contain the breakfast food let's say toast with milk okay and then let's say lunch let's say rice with chicken curry okay so this object contains breakfast and lunch and let's say we get one more object variable let's say night and let's say this one contains dinner noodle soup okay so we got these two objects so what we want to do is we want to combine these both of these objects and produce a new object okay so what we can do is we can let's say let's say we are doing this for picnic okay so we, we want to take all the foods we would eat in a day to our picnic so using this three dots we can use on day 
object and then we can also use a night object okay now console log picnic let's see what we get okay okay we're missing one more okay so make sure we have three save refresh and as you can see we get one single object which contains a breakfast a dinner and lunch so this becomes extremely useful in real world application okay. now let me create one more object uh, one more example and this example will show you how we can use use it to get the rest of the the elements okay so these three dots can be used as a spread as well as a rest so let's have a look at the rest side of it okay so let's create a variable called rivers so this is an array and this will contain a couple of rivers soon cosi tama cosi sapta cosi okay so we got these three rivers now let's say i want to get the first one and the rest okay so what you can do is you can use create a variable using the array destructuring and what you can do is you can say first you want to get the first and then you want to get three dot rest okay now what you can do you can console log and let's say we want to see the first one only okay so let's see we get only the first one sunkoshi now if we want to get the rest you can do rest so this would give us the rest not the first one right so refresh as you can see we got the rest but not the first one and this works exactly the same way in an object as well so this is how we can use these three dots as rest or spread operator in es6 Hi, how are we doing? Now in this video, you're going to learn about classes, okay? So in JavaScript, previously there was no official classes in JavaScript. So what we could do is we could create a function and add methods on that function object, okay? Using the prototype. So one thing you should know that in JavaScript functions are objects. Whenever you create an object, the prototype object is also created behind the scene. So using this prototype, we could uh, create something like class. Okay, so this is how we would do previously. So let's do it. So we get better understanding of how uh, classes works in JavaScript. Okay, so let's create this simple function. Let's call it holiday. Let's make it capital. Function holiday. And let's say it will take two arguments, destination. And let's say days. Okay, now we could refer using this this keyword this this destination so this destination equals to destination this days equals to days okay so this is a function we have here now what we could do is we could add a method to this function using prototype. So what you could do, you could say holiday dot prototype, okay, access this holiday functions prototype object and add info into it. So this is a function and this function could do something. So for example, let's console log let's say this then destination plus let's use this pipe symbol plus this days plus days okay so let's try using this variable let's say nepal equals to let's create a new instance of it new New holiday 
okay and we can pass the arguments to Nepal is the destination and days let's say 30 okay so console log Nepal and we want to access the method info right out of Nepal so we create a function we added this method to this function and we create a new instance of it and then we console log and we access this new functions this method okay so let's save give it a try let's make sure it's smaller save okay so nepal 30 days okay so this is how you would add method to the function object right now there's a better way of creating classes in es6 so let's give that a try let's get rid of this so let's create this class holiday okay now before we add any properties or methods let's see how it works let's console log let's console log this holiday class okay okay so we get this object okay that's expected but now we're not going to use prototype like we did before instead what we're going to do is we're going to use the constructor okay so what is constructor just to make you understand what is constructor i'm going to use console log holiday dot prototype okay so like i told you earlier when we create a function this prototype object is created behind the scene now even though this is a class this is technically a function behind the scene and in javascript functions are objects okay so let's give it a try let's see what it holds holiday dot prototype let's save Let's refresh and as you can see we have this object with constructor okay so it can take the arguments so constructor that's how it works so it is part of the prototype object that is created behind the scene and ready for us to use what we can do is we can call this constructor inside this class and set the properties okay so what you can do is constructor now inside here what we can say is we can first it will take the arguments destination and days just like we did earlier and we can set this destination equals to destination and this days equals to days okay so whenever we create a new instance of this holiday using the new keyword and pass in the arguments that will be available here and this class this will this constructor method will set the arguments as property to this class okay now once we have the properties we can also create add more methods so let's say we have info method and this will simply console log let's use this back tick okay let's say this this destination will take will take this days days okay so this is how we can create a class we add properties we add methods now we can use this class as many times as we need for example let's create const trip equals to new using this new keyword let's instantiate this class new holiday and let's give it an arg argument let's say nepal and let's give let's give actually katmandu nepal and then the days let's give 30 okay now we can see console log trip and we want to access its method info right let's invoke this here let's save go here refresh Kathmandu Nepal will take 30 days okay so this is how we can create classes in ES6 
use the constructor to set the properties and we add methods like so and we can reuse it using this new keyword we can instantiate as many times as we need now let's go one step further and let's see how we can extend from one class to another okay so children class can extend from parent class so that all these properties and methods from the parent class are available to the children class when you when the children extends to this parent class okay so let's have a look at that let's get rid of this so we have this class let's treat it as super class or parent class okay let's just comment here and then the children class we can name them subclass okay so they are known as super class and subclass okay so let's create another class that will extend from holiday so let's say class expedition extends holiday okay so the first thing we can do is we can call the constructor constructor so it will take the argument of destination days and as well as let's add one more thing let's add some gear as well okay so that's the whole point of we are extending because we want to add this gear property okay so what we can do is we don't need to say again this destination these days because we are extending from this class so these properties are available here because it's extending so all we need to do is super and then destination and then days so what's happening here is we are calling the super class the parent class and passing the arguments to the parent class so they will be processed here when we instantiate this expedition class we will get the arguments of destination days and gear but destination and days we are passing it to parent for the handling so in other uh, classical object oriented languages you would you would use parent keyword in javascript this is how you do use this super okay so constructor the super pass it to the super class and this class this expedition will only handle the gear okay so it will set the gear property to on its own now we can still access the info method from the parent class the super class holiday right so what we can do is we can use this and here we can access this super info so this method exactly the way it outputs so we can use that and we can also add our own console log okay so this is how we can override the method we're extending from the parent so we still using this info method but we are overriding so we taking everything there is it is outputting we using that and we are adding additional information as well so console log let's say let's say bring your gears as well so what you can do let's use this back ticks bring your this gear and what we can do is we can join okay so let's join this gear dot let's use this join method okay with and here okay now let's try this const let's create a new instance of this new expedition let's name it const trip with gear okay so let's say new expedition and let's give the arguments so the arguments the first one will be the destination let's say Everest and days let's say 30 and then let's say we pass in the gear the array of uh, array of items okay as our gear so let's say 
sunglasses let's say flags let's say camera so this is the superclass this subclass is extending the superclass and we instantiating it here let's trip with gear dot info let's try accessing this method so let's give it a try okay so average will take 30 days so that is the output of this parent info class info method and we also added bring your sunglasses and your flags and your camera okay so these are the gears we added so when we instantiate this new class we get whatever it inherits from the parent as well as new console log okay so the point here is this is how we can create a class in ES6 we can another subclass can extend and we we still set the constructor we use a super to access the the super class or the parent class okay and this is how we work with classes in ES6 okay so now this is important because this is how you would be working in react okay you would be setting the constructor properties super properties and that's how you will go you will add the methods like so all right so with this you would be very comfortable getting started with react hello there how are you doing now in this section you're going to learn about the basics of react now before we combine react with the laravel it's a good practice to just learn react on its own it's going to be pretty similar but this will uh, be a bit easier to learn okay so let's begin by installing react the first thing you need to make sure that you have node installed okay so if you don't have node installed in your computer you can simply go to nodejs.o and you can download either for mac or windows okay so once you do that if you go to your terminal terminal you can type node-v for node version and you will see the node version so if you see this that means you have node installed in your computer so once you have that what we can do is we can go to react.js.org and we just need to install react using let me go through get started let's go to installation Okay, we can use CDN links as well, but obviously you wouldn't use that. So let's go do it straight away. So what you can do is we can install this create react app. It is the best way to start building new react application, single page applications. Okay, so we just need to run this command. So this will install this create react app globally dash Z. Okay, so let's go and paste that command and hit enter okay i get this error i just need to run sudo okay so once that is done we are ready to create new react projects just by running this command create react app and the name whatever you like to call it okay so let's begin now before we do anything let's decide where we want to create this application right so you might want to create on your desktop or some folders you can create anywhere because we have installed this globally so it is available anywhere in your computer okay so what i'm going to do is i have a couple of folders in my root directory and there is one called react so if you don't have you can create one in your root okay so let's go let's change directory cd into react list all the files i have all these files 
I'm going to create one more so this time using this command that we just installed create react app let's name it what do we call it let's say la react okay let's do that so it will take some time so once it is done i'll be back okay so once it is done you'll get this a beautiful uh, messages here you can run yarn start to start the application yarn build to build this application before you deploy it to your production okay you, if you are running the test you can use this yarn test and if you run this yarn eject what it will do is this create react app is a uh, the kind of a packaged well packaged system so if you want to break it out you would run yarn eject okay so you might not want to do that and then since we have this already installed we can cd into la react okay cd into there and then we can run this application using this yarn start now everywhere you see yarn you can simply use npm as well okay so npm or yarn whichever you prefer okay so let's see it into this one and then let's say yarn start or you can use npm start as well okay so once you do that this will open now i have already another application running so it is asking me to another port i'll just hit enter okay and and there we have our freshly installed react application okay so in this video we just installed react now in the next video let's have a look inside this directory let's introduce ourselves into files and folder structures okay so let's do that in the next video thank you hello how are we doing now in the last video we were able to create a fresh install of react right and in this video we're going to have a look in the file and folder structure so what i did is i just opened in sublime text so this is where we install so i was installing this in my root directory inside this react folder and i named it lariat and this is the folder i'm opening in sublime text okay so the first thing you might want to find out is where this is coming from right so welcome to react in this text where it's coming from okay so where it's coming from is if you go and this is the folder structure and then most of the time we will be working inside this source folder okay so if you go inside you see all these files the one we are interested in is this index.js okay so what is happening here you see react and react dom are being imported so this import is es6 feature so when you import a package like this you don't need to specify the directory like so okay so you just give the package name and it goes looking for these packages in node modules folder directly okay so if you go down you will find react and react dom packages as well along with hundreds of other packages because they all depend on each other so it, it is huge okay so we are importing the index.css as well which is here okay and we are importing the app which we will look and this one import register service worker so this comes with this react installation by default and what we're doing is we are rendering this app component okay so this is we're importing from here this is the app.js so we don't need to say .js okay we just need to give the first name so we are importing this app, app component and we are rendering using this react dom dot render method okay so as you can see this render method takes two arguments this is the first argument this is the second argument so the first argument is the component itself so which component you want to render right so in this case this is the app component and where you want to render and this is the place where you want to render okay now what is happening here is it is being rendered 
in a div with id of root okay now this lives inside this public folder so if you go inside public folder we have index.html now this index.html doesn't have many things let's get rid of this comment just so that it's easy to read okay so let's get rid of the comment so this one has this simple head section and it has this div with id of root now this is where the entire react application is being rendered okay so this is what you see here so if you go right click on the page source this is all we see okay because the react application is being rendered in this div with id of root okay so let's have a look at this application now. right let's do that let's go to app.js and this is what is being rendered in the front page this one okay so what is happening here it's just uh, we are importing react as well as component and then we are importing the logo as well from logo.svg right so this is the one and we are importing app.css it's pretty basic now we have this class and we have this render method now this is one of the react lifecycle method okay there are a couple of more and we're going to learn them step by step so this method what it does is it renders now this code looks exactly like html but this is jsx okay so jsx is simply a mixture of html and javascript now this is how you create components in react you mix javascript with html like um, this syntax it's very easy to understand and get started because it's just like writing html and in between you can embed javascript using these two curly braces so this class app is extending the component the the component that is coming from the react okay and using this render method we are returning this jsx okay so it has logo it has the header welcome to react and we, it has some code this is what you see here okay so we can let's get rid of this in fact let's try changing it okay let's change this and have a look so as soon as the react component changes okay it will reload the application automatically okay we are working in a, a small screen but you will see as soon as i save i don't need to reload refresh or anything it just happens okay as you can see the change is reflected directly now we don't really need the logo and css so let's get rid of this and make it simplified so that we can start writing our own code okay so let's just have this div and let's just write we will be back okay let's save refresh it's gone we'll be back okay so we'll be back in the next video and we will start writing some react code all right i'll see you in the next video thank you hello how are we doing now in this video we're going to write some react code okay but before we do that let's get rid of all these css we don't really need if we need we can create later right we're not going to run the test so let's get rid of this let's get rid of this let's get rid of the logo okay and let's just keep this is the main file index.js okay and this is the only one component we have okay now let's go here let's get rid of the index reference here okay perfect okay so that's fine now the first thing i want to do is i want to make an api call because i don't really like to hard code write some data and then just write some something here to play around because i don't really like to work with dummy data because when you're working in a real real world environment you will be making api calls so you're getting the data from the api and you will be rendering and all that stuff right now when you work with the local data like so it works but it's different than making an api call because that takes few seconds to come 
So during that time, the data is not available in your component. And then when you want to render, you don't see the data, you get an error and you get frustrated. Okay. So I'm not going to use this hardcoded data. Instead, I'm going to directly make an API call to the open source um, API we have available. I'm going to use the one that is called random uses so that we can get the random uses and play around with that data. Okay. So to make an API call, the first thing I need is I need uh, some kind of uh, the library to make a Ajax call easier. Okay, so we're not going to use jQuery. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to work with React. So what we can do is we can use this Axios. So Axios, if you have if you haven't heard about Axios, it is. Let's go have a look. So it is a promised based HTTP client. Okay, so we can use Axios to make API calls. Okay, and it makes it really easy because it is a promised based. We can chain using dot then, and we can catch the errors using the cats method. Okay, so let's give it a try. First thing we need is we need to um, install this package, right? So let's install here using uh, either npm or yarn you can run npm install axios i'm going to use yarn add axios okay okay so once it is done it's ready to use let's bring our application to the start status okay and then i can import axios from axios okay because this is a package i don't need to give the path like so okay now the very first thing we need is we need to be able to hold the data in the local component okay so we in react we call it a state the, so the state will hold the data okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a constructor constructor props super props so we know that es6 class component can use a constructor to initialize internal component state okay okay so what you're trying to do is we're trying to create a state okay so you do that using this dot state equals to this object and you can add properties okay so in this case we will try to add the users okay we will make an api call get all the users and store in our local state so that we can play around with this data so currently it is empty obviously because we don't have we haven't made any api calls but once we do this array will be filled with the users data okay so this is how you begin okay so you create a constructor super inside here inside the constructor you create a state and based on the application you're building you add the properties and the value they hold okay so for the moment it's empty now we need to make an api call and store that data in the state users okay so here i can use one of the react's lifecycle method that is called component will mount okay so this method comes with react now this method is useful when you want to make some api calls just before the component mounts it says will mount right so just before the component mounts we can use this method and there is another one that is also super useful that is called component did mount so this is before the component mounts component did mount is right after the component mounted okay so these two are mostly used and there are a few of the other ones as well. Now just before the component will mount, I want to make an API call using this Axios library. Okay, so let's use this Axios. Now here we can pass the URL. Okay, so which URL you are trying to, to make an API call? 
so that one is here okay so this is api dot random user dot me and what nationality is us and results we want five okay so let's copy this this is an open source api so you don't need to register or get client id or anything so it's very good to use let's copy this and come here and let's paste here so this is the api this is the url that we want to make an api call then because this is axios is promise based okay so we get to use then so once we make a call then we get response right response and using this arrow function let's console log the response so that we can see what we get let's fix this typo okay let's go and we get the response as you can see in our console beautiful so this response contains the data inside this data we have a results of five items in an array so this results contains it is an array and it contains five users beautiful okay so what we can do now that we have this data we can put this data in the states users array okay so how we do that is by using this method called set state in react every time you want to make changes or update the state you always use set state method okay that is the only way react knows that state has been changed and it will re-render the application with the changes okay so use then response now using this arrow function what you can do is this set state method okay so this is important every time you want to make change to the state you use this you don't directly modify instead you use this you don't use the push method or anything like that you just use set state okay because we don't want to mutate the state we just want to create a new object so the old data is not overwritten okay so this set state now what you're trying to do here let's we want to give an object right so within this object the key is users the value currently it's empty but now we have the value so we can set the value using response and if you see here it's response dot data dot results right so users the value will be response dot data dot results okay so because this component will mount method runs automatically we don't have to invoke this function okay so as soon as the component before it mounts it runs it makes an api call and it sets the state so the users will have the users data so if you refresh save this one refresh okay we don't see anything because we're not console logging so what we can do is if you don't have this react dev tools react dev tools chrome make sure you um, install this one it is super useful when you're developing okay so i have already added so if you don't have it just add it and maybe you need to restart your browser okay so once you do that what you will see is you will see this react tab here okay and as you can see on the right side you see the state and the state has the users five items in it beautiful okay so we have the users in our state now what we can do is we can loop through all the users that are available in the state and render in our application so using this render method we can render all the users using jsx so let's do that in the next video thank you hello how are we doing now in this video we have all the users available in our local state so let's render them okay so inside this render method what we can do is let's get rid of this and let's write here so we're going to 
embed JavaScript, right? So within these two curly braces, okay, within here, what we can say is this state uses, right? This state uses dot map. Okay, so we use this method map. It will map out each items available. Okay, so let's say user and using this arrow arrow function. Let's return inside div. Okay. Now again within these two curly braces. So anytime you wanna embed the JavaScript expression, you make sure you do it inside the curly braces. Okay. So this state uses map each user and return user dot. Now what can we return? Let's have a look. So each users they have cell phone date of birth email id and so on let's begin with cell phone okay user cell easy so we are rendering each users and this time we're just displaying the cell let's have a look as you can see we are able to display the users data how cool is that right okay so this is how you can use map method to render the data that is available in the state now we can obviously import bootstrap put in this file put inside public index okay and we can start using uh, bootstrap styling but let's not worry about styling for this application we just want to learn the basics right now one thing you will notice that here even though it is pretty much similar to HTML, there are a couple of things such as class. So you don't do class, you just do class name. Okay, that is one thing that most of the time it is used. So very soon you'll get used to it. But beside that, I um, can't think of anything else. So it's pretty much uh, similar to HTML. Okay. So before we can render more elements, we can go ahead and do that using this let's bring it down okay so for each user we are rendering the user cell let's we can add more items obviously maybe we want to render the name right so what's the name here let's have a look so name and they have first last and all that so name first and we can concat last okay so let's do that user name first then let's save okay that's the first name maybe we want to put inside h2 or maybe h3 okay and let's create some more and within p tag okay so within this curly brace let's say user user email what else we have and let's say horizontal line okay after each users okay so that's the username that's the email address and so on obviously you can do more but we got the basic idea right so the next thing I want to show you is how do you extract because writing this um, method like so inside component um, is not always efficient or the best way okay so these API calls you might want to execute from other functions as well later down the road so let's extract this outside of this component and see how it works okay so what I can do is I can simply name this. Let, what do we call it? Let's call it get users. Okay. Now this method will do exactly this. Okay. Let's copy this and paste here. Okay. Now component will mount. We can simply invoke this method. Right. Okay. So this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this becomes uh, maintainable in the long run. So instead of writing everything inside, we just extract it out. Okay. So let's save and give it a try. Refresh. Okay. So it works.
that this is an api call so no matter how fast it is obviously there are few milliseconds at least that that time we don't see any data and then we get the data right if you refresh what we can do is that time we can show the loading some kind of loading state and then once we get the data we show the data so let's implement this loading feature in the next video all right see you in the next video thank you Hello, how are we doing? Now in this video, let's work on this loading component. So when the data is not available, we will see show the loading com loading. Otherwise, we will render the list of users. Okay. So in this lesson, you will learn about conditional rendering. So let's begin by comma separate. Let's add this property to the state loading, and by default, let's make it false. Okay. So by default, loading will not be true. It will be false. Now what we can do is when we make the API call first, what we do is we set the state loading to true. Okay, so before just before we make the call. So we we can do that using set state method. So make sure to do everything using the set state if you want to modify the state. Okay, so this set state loading, let's make it true. When we make the call just before that set to true but once we get the response again we set it to false okay. so before we get the data we set to true once we get the response we set it to false beautiful now we can do apply the conditional rendering here okay using the ternary operator there are a few other ways but we can do that in fact let's let me show you this one first so this state loading so by default it will be true right so this will check using this and operator so this state loading and everything else so in this case what happens is if this is true if this is true then it will render if it is false then we don't see anything it doesn't execute okay so only if it is true it will execute so let's see if the loading state is true it will run okay let's give it a try refresh we don't see anything okay so instead what we can do is we can say this state loading what in fact let me show you this one what if i do the negative okay if i apply if this is if state loading is not true so in that case we see okay, we see that now this is not really helpful here so what i can do is get rid of this one so we can use ternary operator here so this is state loading what if it is true all this will run until here i guess all this will run now if it is false because everything is within these curly braces as you can see so if it is true run this if it is false maybe we can say show the loading compo loading right we could create a new component but let's not do that yet let's just show the text okay so what we're doing is checking using the ternary operator if the loading is true in fact we have to make sure this is not true if loading is not true if loading is false then display the list of users otherwise display loading okay let's go here so it is showing but if i refresh okay for very few milliseconds you see loading here see that loading beautiful so this is how you can apply conditional rendering in react now in the next video maybe we can create another component for loading okay maybe we can create a loading component and we can pass certain data to the loading component and how it works how we can pass data from the parent component to the children component okay so let's see how it all works in the next video all right see you in the next video thank you hello how are you doing now in this video let's learn about creating a separate component and how you can uh, use that separate component all together okay so 
let's go ahead and create another component here inside source folder and let's name it loading loading.js and as you can see the capital letter this is the convention okay used in all the components okay so we got the loading component first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we have react in the scope so import react from react okay and then this time we don't need to create a class component okay we can use a, a functional component a simple component because class is useful when you want to use all these states okay you want the constructor you want to create a state we, you want to bind the methods for all that stuff you want to use the lifecycle methods so in that case you would use class component but for simple data input output you can use a simple um, stateless component okay these are called stateful class components are called stateful these are called stateless okay so let's create one cons let's name it loading equals to it will take this is the arrow function okay the arguments there's nothing to take any argument and it will simply return let's return the loading text in h2 okay okay now this is our component it's a dead simple stateless component now we can do export default loading okay now this loading component is available to use in any other component we just need to import okay so let's go ahead in app.js let's import that import from it's in the same direct so dot slash loading okay so now we are importing instead of down here instead of showing this text what i can do is i can render this component okay loading and make sure to close like so okay it's very important okay so now what we did we created a separate component loading component it's just very simple it just returns the h2 we import that in our app.js and instead of here instead of hard coding the text we rendered so in this case if the loading state is false we render this list of users otherwise we display the loading component okay let's see how it works so refresh as you can see the h2 loading otherwise it works perfectly fine beautiful okay so now i want to show you a couple of more things about this import export so what we did here is we just have one component here sometimes you can create many components okay so what you can do is that time you can have export const loading and then you might have sorry this one you, you can have one export like so another one like so another one like so you can have many components in a situation like that you wouldn't use export default okay in that case you would just get rid of this because you are exporting many so if you have only one then you would use export default otherwise if you have many you don't do export default you just do like so okay so let's try even on one we can try so export const now we're not doing export default we're doing export const now if you go here you see the error so export default was not found okay so that's what happens when you are when we are exporting like so but in a situation like this how do you how do you use that what you can do is go back to app.js and instead of importing like this if it was a default export it would work like this but since it is different what you do is you wrap this within the curly braces just like you saw here you do this okay so this is a destructure now if you go it works fine that way okay so if you are exporting more than one constant you might do like this and when you import such constants you use 
this syntax okay now let's let me put it back the way it was just for simplicity okay okay save okay it works fine now one more thing in a situation you you need to have multiple components to um, to work with the main component for example this is the main component okay so it need to render a lot of different things now it is only showing the loading the one additional but later you might want to show many items so in that case you can create many other components and use like so you know it simplifies your code and these components can be reusable as well okay so in a situation like that what you would do is you would create a component and you would pass the properties from here okay so another component might pass another different property to this component so this component can be reusable that time okay so in this example let's keep it very simple and let's pass the message so when loading component loads you want to display a different message let's say let's give the message of let's say hey 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 okay so this is the message we are giving to this component so this is the property for this component okay now this component can get this property if you go here as you can see here props and here what you can do is you can say props messages okay now still works perfectly fine as you can see the message is being displayed there beautiful now you can even go one step further and you can destructure the property when in the function argument itself okay so previously it was like that now instead of taking the props we can directly destructure here so what are we trying to get we're trying to get the message right so you can simply say message here and then here directly instead of props and all that you just do directly and this i like this way this is much more simpler as well okay so this way also it works so you can see refresh beautiful now this loading component can be reusable for example now in this case this app component is using this loading component and is it is passing its own message now let's imagine another component you might create later that time also you might want to show the loading component but that time you might want to display a different message for example uh, your shopping cart is being loaded or something like that right so you can pass different properties from different components but this component can always stay the same as long as you keep the naming convention properly use the message it can always stay the same and it can be reusable okay now instead of message you, you can also pass the properties of the state you could simply say message equals to this state and whatever you want to pass down right and that data could be rendered in a separate component okay so the possibilities are endless so just the, it's a general concept you can pass the properties like so okay okay so this is it for this lesson let's learn some more about uh, react basics and then we are ready to dive into laravel with react okay i'll see you in the next video thank you hello how are you doing now in this video let's learn about handling click events okay so here we are rendering all the users now on each user let's let's add a simple form okay just just for learning purpose let's create a form let's close this form tag okay so this form will have input and make sure to always close like so okay it's very important so input type let's say type submit okay 
and then value let's say load users okay so when this form when this input uh, this submit will be clicked on this button right it will load more users okay that's what we're trying to do okay so form on submit we can use this method so on submit what we can do is we can execute a certain function okay so for example let's say we're going to create a new function let's name that handle submit okay so this handle submit so we haven't created this yet we will create now okay so all we did is create a simple form with the input type of submit the value is the load users and then when this will be clicked it will execute this function okay so let's save this one let's go here okay we got the button that's great now let's work on and this method okay so handle submit we can go on top let's create here handle submit first thing we want to do is we want to prevent the default behavior so when you click it will reload the page we don't want that right so handle submit event event prevent default okay once we do that what we can do is we can let's say con in fact what we're trying to do is we're trying to make an api call to load more users right so let's do that all we need to do is execute this function right so handle submit prevent the default behavior and then load the users make sure you have this so execute this function once you do that console log console log just uh, more users loaded okay just for our reference okay so we have this function when this is clicked when this is submit this method will run it will prevent the default behavior and then it will execute this get users method okay so let's go here give it a refresh let's try so it's reloading the page because i did a typo here what i did is i misspelled it s u b m i t okay submit make sure you get it right from unsubmit we execute this method this will prevent the default behavior it will get more users okay let's give it a try load users and as you can see cannot read property get users for undefined and that's because we need to bind this method because this class doesn't know okay so when I, when i said this it doesn't know so what i need to do is i need to bind so right after this state inside this constructor anytime you create a new function you need to bind okay so this handle submit right handle submit equals to this handle submit bind so this bind method we use now this method will bind the this method to this class itself okay now if you go refresh load users load users as you can see page is not refreshing it, it is just showing reload loading because we're getting the more data but page is not reloading okay beautiful now what we could also do is we could every time we get load more users we could merge that new data to the old data in the state right but let's not do all that stuff because we're going to work in a real project anyway i just wanted to show you how this uh, the click events works in react okay so let's not work on this one in fact we're going to do all this in the real project later down the road okay but we can even do it it's it's not that difficult okay let's do it actually so every time we click we get more data which we load the data right we execute this method so what we can do is it is setting the state 
on based on each response now what I can do is just like we learn using the spread operator okay so what we can do is use this now keep it inside an array so first we will take all the users that are already exist in the state now in this case it would already be some users there in the state right so we can use this three dots uh, spread operator so we can say this state users so we take the existing users if there are any from the state and then we merge with the rest of the users that are coming from the response after making its API request okay so using this array spread operator we can merge the data merge the users so every time we click we load more data okay so we have five now if I load we have 10 if I load again we have more we have more okay so this is how it works all right so if you go you pay source no, sorry inspect see the state okay you saw it's 20 okay it's 25 it's so on okay so that's how we can merge the state merge the data in the local state as well it's pretty cool right now this becomes super useful in real world application when you're building a real world application these tricks is these tricks are really helpful okay so you're learning quite a lot now let's do a few more uh, small steps in the next video then we will be done with the react basics all right i'll see you in the next video thank you hello how are you doing now we're learning quite a lot react basics okay so now there's one more thing i want to show you that is if you notice we are we have a lot of repetition with this state this state this state right so we can fix this using this um, object destructuring so what you can do here let's say const equals to this state okay so what are we getting from the state we're getting the loading okay loading we're getting users use okay and that's all we're getting okay now what we can do is we can simply use this loading we don't need to repeat this loading all the time because we have already destructured okay so these variables are available for us to use and they refer to the state okay so let's get rid of this this state let's get rid of this state okay let's save this one and this should work okay beautiful refresh everything is working fine beautiful okay so that's quick and easy fix and that simplifies our code okay let's do one more thing that is we can also use inline styling okay so let's try on user first this heading okay so let's let's say you want to apply some inline style how would you how would you do that in react you would do just like this style and within two curly braces okay let's say let's change the color red okay so this is how you can apply inline styling let's go refresh and as you can see the heading color is changed you must have also noticed that uh, you're getting this error each child in an array should have a unique key that's because in react you need to make sure that each element have the unique id okay so in our case we have this div that is rendering the each user the each user's email and and this form so this div needs to have a unique id so what we can do is we can pass this key like so and we pass the user id dot value okay so this is coming from if you go have a look at this result that we're getting so the each user we get the id and we get the value as well so we can give that as a unique id 
so the key will be user id dot value if you save and if you go the error is gone okay so that is how you can fix that error which is an easy fix and finally let's not show all this button on each users doesn't make sense so let's fix that up take this form element and let's put on top here okay and let's create a horizontal line okay so we have a div we have a form one line and then we have all this we're loading the users okay okay now we have five users if i load let's go to react okay we've got five users if i load the users it becomes 10 we get 10 users if i load get 15 and so on beautiful now we are nearly done with react basics now we will learn more when we are working with Laravel and React all together. All right, I'll see you in the next section. Thank you. Now that you have understand the basics of React JS, you should go ahead and try to build a full stack project. How about building a complete social network where you will learn to build your own API using Node.js and you will build the front end with React JS. That sounds exciting, right? So here, in Udemy, I have another course. You can search for React Node and go a bit down. And currently my course sits here, but hopefully by the time you're watching this, it might come on top. And you can see it's just released and I've got a few ratings, only 4.1, but hopefully it will grow up, right? So here, this project covers everything from scratch and this complete social network has pretty much everything you want to learn it has authentication authorization prod so users will be able to update their profile they will be able to create posts there is relationships likes comments and not only that you will also learn to deploy it to the cloud hosting as well there's so much more just have a look in the uh, preview video okay so this covers pretty much everything you would want to know so take your skills further and enroll into this course and build a complete social network okay so another thing i would like to show you is as you can see this is the price for this course however if you apply this coupon code i give you this one is called node react okay so all capital letter node react and if you apply as you can see it's currently 14.99 but once you apply you get 94 percent off and it's up the price you pay okay so this is the absolute minimum you can pay to get this course okay so if you want to expand your knowledge about react then you should definitely check out this course this course will make you a full stack web developer from absolute scratch okay so if you're interested, make sure to apply this coupon code so that you pay the minimum price possible. All right. Thank you very much for being part of this course. And I hope you will find me in some other courses as well in future. All right. Thank you.